Happy Aloha Friday, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of My Ties at Sunset. Mai and I are coming to you live, giving you our take on the Eddie Ekau Big Wave Invitational Surfing Contest out in Waimea Bay. Let's get started. Let's dive into it. I'm Ty, by the way. Aloha, I'm Mai. Happy Aloha Friday. Happy weekend. Ty and I are watching the live streaming video of the Eddie Ikau Invitational in Waimea Bay that is happening today, Sunday. It is also the first day of Chinese New Year. So Kung Hei Fa Choi. Um, I set the intention that we are going to share a lot of laughs, have a lot of fun and share healing. What a gorgeous morning in Hawaii. And already there are thousands of people at Waimea Bay um, ready for this uh, event to start. This is amazing. We haven't had an Eddie Aikau Invitational since 2016, and the waves are supposed to be perfect today, um, according to the buoys and the information that they're getting. So very exciting to see this finally happening. And I'm I did not brave the traffic or the crowds to get out there. In fact, the traffic is so backed up and the parking is completely taken everywhere. They are running extra bus shuttles, but people desperately want to get to the beach. It's going to be all day kind of an event. So what a nice day at the beach. Yeah, I'm sorry. Are you okay? Your voice is starting to crack a little bit there. (laughs) (laughs) I ran out of, I need water. Um, But yeah, I'm just looking at the, the live cam. I mean, it's after sunrise. It's gorgeous. I'm kind of sad that I'm not out there, but I'm also really happy to just be able to talk to you. I mean, you would have to to plan to be out there quite for quite a while. Oh, since I would have had to have been yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Like you said, this edition of Eddie will also be dedicated to Solomon Aikau and longtime Waikiki Beach boy, China Uemura, who recently passed away. So Mm -hmm. um, probably all really great watermen. Um, You know, people are celebrated quite often. The last Invitational was held in 2016. And John mm-hmm. John Florence actually won that competition. But Kelly Slater's set to be there, Billy Kemper, Mason and Michael Ho, and then Maui native Tyler Leron is actually going to be there. And he said that his dad has always dreamed of being part of this and being invited. But since he never got to do it, he's going to do it in his in his father's place. It's really special because there's actually women competing. There's never been women in the Big Wave Invitational before. So I'm really excited to see that footage um, probably later on today. I won't be able to watch it completely live, but um, we definitely want to wish all of the participants uh, definitely be safe and all Mm -hmm. the people who are supporting it, like these jet ski drivers, like I was saying earlier, how scary and exciting at the same time. I've driven a jet ski over like a very small wave and it still hurts to land. So I think, I think it's very <laughs> yeah. exciting that um, we're able to see this and they're sharing it live. But what a great yeah. day for Oahu and Waimea Bay and all the watermen and water women out there. Um, and you were trying to describe to us uh, from a Native Hawaiian sp- perspective, what is it to be a waterman or a water woman? Like what what do you have to encompass? I honestly feel that you've had to spend so much time out on the ocean to be able to read the waves, the tides, the surf, wind conditions. And there's a lot. And every bay, every ocean, it's going to be different. So it's learning all of those things. And, you know, being a strong swimmer, uh, being able to hold your breath, those are all awesome factors that you should have. It's not being fearless on the water. It's about being respectful of the water. And, you know... Prayer. Well, definitely learning about it too. I mean, <laughs> prayer helps. <laughs> prayer helps. Yeah. Um, I'm excited, you know, just to see the beginnings of it. Um, I don't think I'll be able to watch it for long since I'm trying to record in a very precarious uh, <laughs> way, but, you know, I'm here. I'm sitting through it and I'm excited to see it. So, uh, and we're going to have highlights. Yeah. We're going to have highlights. Have, yeah. Throughout highlights the show. Um, because we're not going to be able to record the whole thing. Uh, that'll be hours and hours and hours. And I'm not sure anybody's going to want to sit through all of it. But I will record the Eddie I Cow. And it will be on Surfline. Um, KHON2 is in Hawaii is uh, also airing it on their stations here locally. Um, otherwise, on the internet, Surfline might, might have the entire thing on their site. If you want to go back and watch it later. 
I am really excited to see this start. I know. Countdown has begun. It's like there is a way. Countdown is so exciting. There's like over 10,000 people waiting. And that number has been growing for the past hour. I've been watching it. And there's not that many bathrooms out there. And there's no food or drinks or anything. So you have to bring your own stuff. No, and sadly, I was... I was just um, watching, just before we started recording, they were saying there was a problem with the bathroom. So I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> that water oh. is about to turn into poo water. <laughs> you can't go anywhere near that water. Um, no. You can't even go near the, you know, the water's edge if you're not, because that water will come up and it will drag you out. People have lost their slippers already, um, things, because they went chasing after their slippers and the ocean took them away and you cannot be anywhere near it. It's beautiful to watch, but it's super strong. That current is strong. Now, Eddie was actually last run in 2016 when Hawaii's John John Florence won the contest. This year, there's going to be 40 of the world's big wave surfers. And for the first time, there will actually be women competing. So there's six of them. And I just saw a picture of them this morning. They're all really tall and buff. And so <laughs> they probably definitely can hold their breath for a very long time. And I don't know if I'm saying Eddie's last name right. Eddie but... Eddie yeah, Ocao. okay. So that's good to know. A lot of people were uh, talking to me the other day. They were like, oh, man, Hawaii has so many uh, vowels and all the words and names. And I was like, just keep going with it. Just, you know, <laughs> if you have to, if you have four A's in a row, just say, ah, 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 you know. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, 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 uh. So the contest was expected <laughs> to attract more than 20,000 spectators, and it could be as high as 50,000 people. The waves are expected to reach 50 to 60 feet, although I can't see that from the um, camera view that they have for the beach. Um, I can I can imagine that some spots are going to be that tall. Um, oh, they just it lost a like, jet ski. It looks like overnight people started to go ahead and claim their seats on the beach to watch this. So the yeah, traffic I think is people crazy. Have been camping since Friday. And, oh, I'm not surprised by that. Yeah. And they did open up Waimea Valley Park, Waimea Falls Park. They opened up the that for um parking, the front lot, they were charging forty dollars. And then for the back lot, they were charging twenty dollars. And that was supposed to open at two. They opened it at midnight because the traffic that was lined up. Um oh, yeah, for I bet there were people waiting so long. Um HPD asked them to open, so they did, and they filled up within less than two hours i think there is buses running extra bus buses are running um if you can park in haleiva get you to waimea bay well unfortunately this this recording is going to air after this is done so all our tips and tricks are not going to help you guys out today but i think the best way to watch it is live via camera because there is no way i would ever fight any kind of traffic oh look they're running in some jet skis now Yep, I saw the jet skis going in. Yeah, they got to time it with the waves because they got to make sure that they get out there. But without those brave uh, men and women who are on the jet skis, our surfers, when they wipe out, they could drown potentially. So yeah, big kudos to them for being able to ride that because I would be frightened out of my mind. I've been thrown off a jet ski before. It's not pleasant. Um, Also, if you haven't been to Waimea, there's a little bit of a drop off uh, right at the edge where the ocean meets the sand. Mm-hmm. So you kind of have to have a lot of oomph to get in there. And then it's like an uphill battle. So really enjoying kind of seeing this and seeing how big the waves are out there. I mean, it's going to be an exciting day for everybody. It is. I just wanted to say that the Eddie Aikau is not a surfing um, competition as much as it is a memorial to honor Eddie Aikau and everything that he did. And it's really just showing off the amazing skill and talent of these top surfers in the world that go and they participate in this event. We were going to talk about kind of like what makes a waterman a waterman. And uh, Eddie was actually cemented as one of the very first big wave surfers. He's a lifeguard on uh, the North Shore and he's been accredited with 500 saves especially because his specialty was navigating those large waves. So he saved quite a number of lives um, in his lifetime. So yes, he did. He has a couple other brothers, um, Solomon, who also passed away. They're going to honor him at this event. 
Well, it says, according to historians, on March 16th, the Hokulea left Magic Island on Oahu bound for Tahiti. The following day, the canoe developed a leak in its hull approximately 12 miles off the coast of Molokai. The canoe capsized. In order to save his crew, Eddie volunteered to paddle his surfboard to Lanai to bring rescue crews back to the Hokulea. Unfortunately, once Eddie left his crew, he was never seen again. He had taken off his life jacket to make paddling his surfboard easier. According to Hawaii's maritime historians, the search for Eddie was the largest air sea, air sea search in Hawaii history. Eddie's body was never recovered. This was a major blow to the heart of local surfers. So that's why they deem it Eddie would go, even if the waves were really big. It is a memorial service for him, a kind of a remembrance of a great waterman. Okay, well... For five minutes, I have to like sit here for a minute. Well, Happy New Year. I know that you are about to go to a beautiful dinner with your family to celebrate yep. Chinese New Year. And um, it's kind of a big day. There's a lot happening. So, Kung Hei Fa Choi, Happy 2023. Kung Hei Fa Choi. Yes, wishing everybody prosperity and abundance in the new year. And what a way to kick it off with the Eddie Aikau. So Year of the Rabbit, the rabbit actually re represents kindness and courage in the Chinese Zodiac. And um, a lot of people are saying that it's going to be a, a turn of events, like a luckier new year, especially for most of the Zodiac signs. I'm not going to say all, uh, mm -hmm. just because they're always like, be cautious, you know. The rabbit is cute. And, you know, they have always been considered lucky, but it is a seven, if you know your numerology, that it could mean potential conflict. So, you know, keep state. I agree. Keep caution. But also good luck is, I think, going to just be infused in the energy of the entire year. Yeah, let's see. The Lunar New Year celebration lasts 15 days from the new moon to the full, leading to the Lantern Festival. Traditionally, uh, red envelopes containing money are given out to children for good luck or single people. I would like to add that. I am still single, not married. <laughs> therefore, I get a red envelope still from all the uh, married couples that I'm around. So it's really great. The rabbit is related to the earthly brand. They are believed to be clever, passionate, and generous. They are considered graceful and receivers of luck. However, some of their negative traits are, are often being overly cautious, sensitive, and superficial. Other negative attributes include being short-tempered and anxious. For this year, the rabbit promises a favorable year celebrating fortune and peace despite the challenges encountered. So cross our fingers that the world finds a little bit of peace and relaxation. And we are almost there, y'all, To We are three minutes away. So I'll just continue <laughs> talking about the new year. Um, I'm excited to eat. So you're supposed to eat noodles. Uh, you're supposed to have a noodle dish for like, I think it's prosperity and longevity in a way. Like noodles long are life. abundant in your bowl. Long Especially life. Long, long noodles. Yeah. So Why we have fish, we have crab, we have uh, homemade tasu pork, but noodles was like one of the things that somebody was like, oh, make sure we have a noodle dish. And my mom's proper response to that was make it yourself because she, <laughs> <laughs> because she's making all the dishes. <laughs> somebody was like, hey, do we need a noodle dish? And my mom was like, make it yourself. She was like deep in it. She said she was so tired from cooking. I was just like, mom, you put yourself up for this. <laughs> one minute to go. One We're here. To go. We made it. I'm dying in the sun right now, even though it's cold outside. Like, I'm getting my final tan. I know, um, but it's so exciting. What do you think about seeing Hawaii all the way from the mainland? I mean, I love I love it. I love the ocean. So that's always been, like, a blessing. And, and I'm just excited to see what that energy looks like there. I mean, I'm probably, I'm sure we can feel it through. I uh, feel I'm looking the at computer. those waves and I am feeling the PTSD of being swiped out. It's just. <laughs> I know. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful day to look at that sun coming out. It is. Um, it is. It looks like Surfline. We're waiting it's on Surfline to start the live feed. So it's going to be epic, epic, exciting, huge waves and the best surfers in the world. Oh, my God. It's starting. It's starting. Wait, are yeah, they there you go. Oh, the video? look at that. Look at that view. Oh. This is this must be stock footage. There's no like no crowds. Yeah, this is stock footage. That was from oh, the last one. Yeah, this is 2016, y'all. That's beautiful I love that. footage. Look at those waves. Oh my god. I mean, it's scary. It is scary. I mean, you're going so is. fast. It does feel amazing to like drop in on a wave and to have that rush of that water just like speeding you towards the shore is quite amazing. I miss being that tan. <laughs> I mean, when we surfed waves on the canoes, you're with your, you know, five other people. And it's like you to drop in. Canoes are, are so long. They're, mm -hmm. what are they, like 45 feet? 
There he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Kelly Slater. Uh, yeah, look at him surf on those big waves and, and the photographer is getting out there. Oh, uh, the Hokulea. Oh, yeah, these are those last last photos of him on the Hokulea. The Hokulea is great, y'all. Just, I love that Moana, like, honored the construction and the beauty of these canoes because people didn't know that they even existed like that. I'm like, yeah, and they built huge. that stuff. They are huge. They are meant to cross the ocean. And that's how those. And this is honestly arrived. just celebrating them getting on a wave. That's it. But you've got to be good. Like you can't just pop a lop out there. No, no. And you could die. And that's why it's an invite only kind of event. This is um, why Maya Valley right here, guys. And this is where all the traffic would be. If you ever want to <laughs> go when they're not having the invitational, you have to get there early to get parking. Or you can forget yeah. about it. Yeah. Oof. Uh, that was a yesterday crash. I was out driving around the island and it was flat and low tide, really low tide. And I'm just like, oh, it's because that big swell is coming in. Yep. Oh my gosh. Look at that wave. Nice. Oh my God. They're huge. Look at the sets. You can see them lined up. Beautiful. I love this view. Oh my God. Oh, we're coming Our in drones. Hot. So fun. There's a I lot of people that. there. Look how deep that is. Oh, my goodness. The crowds are amazing. So many people who have come to watch this event. Wow, the stream is up to 35,000 people right now. Well, this is going to be amazing. Ty and I will be back with you shortly. We're back. It was Chinese New Year. We have watched the Eddie Aikau Invitational. Congratulations to lifeguard Luke Shepardson, who won. I'm, I feel like it's even more special because another lifeguard, Eddie Aikau, famous lifeguard, and then one by, you know, one of his fellow lifeguards. Very cool. Very cool. And the, the interviews throughout the day with all the different mm -hmm. surfers, like how many backed out so that other people could have a chance to surf the Invitational. It was so amazing. So beautiful and they have such a family it feels like ohana you know you're a surfer you're among those watermen and they're just all very family very loving very caring oh my gosh can i just say how gorgeous yesterday was in hawaii it was just beautiful i can't and the crowds were intense i mean just watching how many people were there on the beach every time they would show them thousands and thousands of people and it's not like you can go cool off in the ocean you have to yeah that was that you was know, not if you're great lucky, you can go to um the shower and stand in the shower and rinse off i did see news coverage um in the evening that all of the shops and the stores and the uh, restaurants and anywhere and everywhere that you could buy something was inundated with all of these people shopping. So that was probably a really wonderful economic boost for the North Shore. The um, Eddie was very international. There are surfers around the world and wherever there is ocean and there are waves, right? You're going to find some crazy human out there <laughs> surfing. I know they, they surf in some really interesting places in the Mediterranean, South Africa too. South Africa actually has more sharks than, than Hawaii does. So I hear that a lot from my friends. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Famously. But they don't report it. They don't report being eaten by sharks down in South Africa. Yeah. They have other things, too. Um, I just love the yeah. idea that surfers, they're just always out looking for this great wave. And you always know that they're traveling. I mean, my uncle, he was like a professional skateboarder. He would skateboard in contests. And they would take him all over the world. And then he would surf at all these places around the world. He never did surfing professionally, um, I don't think. But he did surf at a lot of really beautiful places around the planet. That's awesome. I would love to hear some stories about that. I know that he went to he went to Tahiti and he do, dove for pearls. You know, he dived down for the big oysters. Yeah. Oysters, yeah, oyster pearls. Yeah, you have to hold your breath. So I think that's where he learned to hold his breath for so long. And now, for years, he's been a spearfisher diver. Yeah, that's cool. He, I remember seeing him out of water. And he was wearing um, like it looked like camouflage wetsuit. And I was like, that is just crazy. I, I you don't think about being you're being camouflaged in the ocean. <laughs> like, does that really work on fish? Uh -huh. <laughs> Maybe it does. I mean, it probably does like in a way, but I don't know. I, I would just be frightened. <laughs> 
we've been in the ocean many times and you know i was watching the surfers on those big swells just you know in the back as the sets were coming in and they're deciding on which ones to surf and i'm like we've been out on those big swells and you know how far it lifts you up and you go it's like when you come up and then you go down and it's very it's like a mountain the ocean just like picks you up (laughs) it's crazy it just picks you up you're so funny yeah it just takes you somewhere you go on a journey you're fine suck it up i used to love being (laughs) on the swells the big ones because when you go up the swell and then you come back down there is a ride you know that you going downhill i've done it on uh, in all kinds of boats actually my one man i've done it in the canoes the six man canoes that we used to paddle and also in several power boats for some reason even sailing my dad my dad used to sail so i've been on the water my whole life yeah i i remember you telling me about your dad and like he used to race like jet boats or something like that too he used to raise those flat bottom boats yeah they're flat there was a movie that um, kind of showed it. I can't remember. It was like they were in a small town, and but it's flat bottom boats, and they go, they just go so fast across the surface of the water. Usually, they like to do those on lakes where there's not a lot of water chop. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of fun, right? Well, it's super dangerous because I think he's actually been in a race where someone flipped over and died, and I think my mom oh. had just given birth to me, and she's like, "You're done." You're not doing that anymore. <laughs> and uh, then he switched to sailing. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for a special episode of My Ties at Sunset. Thank you for joining us and watching the Eddie Eichau Invitational. Very excited. Waimea Bay, you did not disappoint. Be sure to check us out at MyTiesAtSunset.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and anywhere else you find your favorite podcasts. And until we meet again, ahoy ho!